So there has been a lot of speculation recently about Elder Scrolls 6. We haven't actually had direct confirmation of it yet, but we pretty much know that if they aren't already working on it, that Bethesda will be working on the Elder Scrolls 6 pretty soon. Especially since Todd Howard did just say that they're working on three big projects, and we have E3 coming up as well. So I thought this would be the perfect time for me to give a bit of an overall view of what I think would make the perfect Elder Scrolls 6 game. Now obviously, I can't be going it super in depth into everything I want to talk about today in this one video, so what I think I'm going to be doing is making this into a bit of a mini-series later on down the line and doing a bit of an Elder Scrolls 6 wishlist type series but for today I think I'm going to be talking about what I think they can do to make the Elder Scrolls 6 perfect. Because at the end of the day they do have a long time to work on it, it has been 5 years since the last Elder Scrolls game came out and I think with the way it's going now the earliest the next game could possibly come out is 2017, it may even be as late as 2018 or 19 at the absolute latest. But honestly, if I think Bethesda listen to their community and also take their experiences from the previous games, they could potentially have a bit of a killer on their hands. So with that being said, I'm going to get into what I think would make Elder Scrolls 6 perfect. So I'm going to talk about main quest first, because at the end of the day, this is usually one of the main aspects of a game like this. And honestly, I did quite like the previous game's main quest, Skyrim's main quest, but the problem with it was very focused around the whole dragon combat thing, and after you fought a few dragons, the combat style did get very repetitive. Um, now, at the end of the day, I did think it was it was pretty good to try and take down the, the world eater and all that, but the final battle was pretty much the exact same as any other fight with a dragon, so honestly, I think they need to strike some sort of balance between actually leading up to something awesome as opposed to leading up to a final battle, which is no different from about 20 other battles you've done throughout the game against dragons. So yeah, okay, I do quite like the story of the previous game, but I think that they do have a lot to work on in terms of sort of making more of a gradual curve to go from sort of easier sort of starter quests and then maybe lead it up to a bit of a, a bigger finale. Because don't get me wrong, Savangard was really nice and it was awesome to see all like the heroes and all that, but at the same time, it was just a bit of a disappointing ending in my opinion. Like you fight Alduin twice, the first time he escapes and then the second time you kill him, but the second time was no different really than the first time except that the sky was pretty. Uh, honestly, if I could have my way, I think incorporating the Daedra back into it would be awesome. I think the quest of Oblivion was also awesome, but again, it did get very competitive once it got to the point where you had to shut down the Oblivion gates. Um, you had to go into each Oblivion Gate to shut it down and it got to the point where it was very similar each time. So I think the main thing that the Bethesda need to focus on when making the new main quest is just to try and keep it fresh throughout, not drag it on too long, but also not make it too repetitive. But other than that, I think it included the Daedra, it'd be awesome. I think if it included dragons as well, it would still be pretty awesome as long as they weren't too frequent and too many of them, because, uh, you know, probably would get pretty boring. Okay, next up, maybe this isn't as important of an aspect as the main quest, but this is a pretty big thing to me in pretty much any open world game, and that is transport. I think transport in the Old Scrolls series could definitely do a bit of work. I did really like the system for Skyrim, in that obviously you had to discover everything before you could fast travel to it, but there was the option of paying money to get to the cities. Um, if you wanted to do that as well. I think that system works really well. But with regards to movement around the actual world and um, stuff like that, I think that it's important they get this right. Now, sprinting was a great addition to Skyrim. Obviously, that wasn't in Oblivion, and I think that did great, and I think the stamina system, it worked fine. Horses, though, they need to do something about this. Because unless you want to be walking across the entire land, basically, your only option is to take a horse. However, in both Oblivion and Skyrim, the horses were very broken. I mean, I speedrun Skyrim and we use a horse to climb up the entire throat of the world. Just We just go up the side of it because because Bethesda. So yeah, I think horses definitely need to be in the game, but if they are going to have horses, they need to learn from previous experiences and make sure that they actually work properly and realistically, and also don't die when they fall two feet. But honestly, I don't see why they can't mix it up a little bit. I mean, obviously there was the stagecoaches in Skyrim. I don't see why we wouldn't perhaps be able to, um, you know, transport around on, you know, ride around our own stagecoach. I think riding around on dragons would be awesome, but maybe a bit unbalanced because you could just fly all over the place and it'd, you'd get from one side to the other really quickly and I just think it'd be a little bit boring, but if they do that right, it could be pretty good as well. And I don't see why they don't have some sort of boat system. Now, at the end of the day, this does depend on where the location is set and we will be talking about this later on. However, I think it'd be pretty awesome if they just had like maybe some way, you know, canoe or something like that. Or just any sort of like little boat system so you can go around rivers and lakes. Again, it depends on where the game is set. Obviously, there weren't a ton of rivers and lakes in Skyrim, but at the end of the day, if they are going to have more water in the area, like there was in Cyrodiil, then that would sort of make sense to me. Okay, next up we're going to be talking about endings. Now, honestly, The Elder Scrolls is usually pretty cut and dry with the endings, but the Fallout series has always had at least two or three different types of endings. So I don't see why they can't incorporate this into The Elder Scrolls series, because honestly, it does seem to do well enough for the Fallout series. Now, I'm not necessarily saying it has to be like 
Stanley Parable with like 30 different endings, but I think it'd be cool just to have maybe some sort of alternate different ways of ending it. I don't think that a karma system would work in Elder Scrolls series at all, in fact, as much as I enjoyed it in the previous games, I think removing it for Fallout 4 was the right idea. But I think at least some point to have some sort of player choice at some point along the line to actually ultimately decide the ending. Obviously Skyrim did have outcomes based on um, what happened at the Peace Council, obviously you got to decide what whether the Imperials got what city and what cities the Stormcloaks got. So there was some variation there but I think with regards to the actual ending it'd be nice to have some sort of variation. So on to the next thing I want to talk about, factions. So honestly, I really like the factions at the minute. I really like the Fighters Guild or the Companions in Skyrim, uh, the Mages Guild, uh, all that sort of stuff, the Dark Brotherhood and the Thieves Guild. And I think those guilds are all awesome as they are. However, I think it would be pretty awesome to have a new faction because it's pretty much always been these same four factions or you know however many there are, <laughs> but um, it's pretty much always been the same. So I think if they chucked in a new faction, I don't really see why not. And I think it'd be a pretty cool addition to make. And I just think it'd be a really great way to sort of spice things up and make it unique because at the end of the day the series has been going for a long time now so I see no reason for them not wanting to mixing things up. As to what that faction would actually be, I don't know. I think there's a lot of options with factions. Uh, at the end of the day there's things that are already in the game like for example the Akaviri Warriors, uh, the Vigilance of Stendar. I think the Vigilance of Stendar would be awesome. Those are the people who hunt Daedra in case you're wondering. Um, so there are already like tons of like well, I'll say tons, I only listed two. But there are already a bunch of variety within the universe of things that you could potentially join. Like, I mean, like I said, I think joining the Vigilance of Stendhal would be awesome. Um, there was, I don't remember the names of them, but in Oblivion there were those vampire hunters. I think that could be fleshed out a bit more. Um, so there's already options there, you know, they don't even have to think of anything new completely off the bat. But coming into the faction storylines themselves, I think they should maybe mix the way they did it in Skyrim and Oblivion a bit more too. So Skyrim focused more on having actual storylines, whereas Oblivion just more focused on giving you missions and objectives and then you go out, do the mission, get some money, and the story is sort of more of a secondary element to Oblivion. And I honestly think that they should mix these two together a bit, because in Oblivion, as you work through the missions, you ranked up through the guild, and I think Having an actual storyline for the factions is definitely a benefit and I think they should keep that from Skyrim, but I think they need to bring the elements of ranks in through um, from Oblivion as well. And obviously in Skyrim, say for the companions, when you want it, you become the leader of the companions, but I think it'd be nice if this actually meant something. Because coming the leader of companions basically just meant that you could have anyone be your follower and not much more than that, but I think it'd be pretty cool if you could actually maybe use this power to expand the way it works. Similar to the Minutemen, when you become the, what is it, like the corporal of the Minutemen or whatever it is, you basically have the ability to like, um, you know, expand the empire, recruit people, all that sort of stuff. And I think it'd be awesome if you actually have the ability to recruit people into your factions as well. Just a bit of an idea. Okay, next up I want to talk about the perks and the skills. Honestly, I really like the Skyrim system. I really like the way that you can just go to the particular skill. Um, but I think I would quite like it if they could bring back the way it worked in Oblivion in that your individual skills will level up as you use them. I think that was really good, so if you're using destruction, your destruction magic will level up, or say you're using one-handed, your one-handed will level up, all that sort of stuff. I think it works really well, and I think this... The, I, I honestly don't see why they have any reason to change that. I also think the skill tree works really well, getting your perks after every level and, you know, distributing those. Uh, my only major gripe is that you only get one skill point a level, and I think that's pretty tough, especially when you look at, like, some of the perks of, like, up to level 5. So you've got to spend 5 levels just to max out one particular bonus. So I think they could maybe do with balancing that a little bit. Maybe either have less options with the actual perks themselves, or change the system in which you actually level stuff up. Uh, I don't know, I think it'd be great for them to mix the Skyrim one and still have perks, but mix it with Oblivion so that uh, some of the basic stuff, like instead of having 10% more damage with one-handed weapons be a perk, you could just have it as your one-handed skill increases, so would your damage and efficiency and stuff as well. So I think they could really do with mixing those two together, in my opinion. I also think there could be more of a focus on classes. I think Oblivion nearly nailed it, because obviously you get the bit at the start where you could choose, like, Nightblade or Crusader or anything like that. But I think they need to bring this back in the new Elder Scrolls and put a bit more of a focus on it. Because I think it'd be pretty awesome to be able to choose your class. And at the end of the day, people would do this in Skyrim anyway. They'd say, oh, here's a thief class or here is a Nightblade class and they'll show you how to build it. But I think if this is more integrated into the into the game, it'd give you a lot more choice in the way you can build your character in character development. And you'd also give it a lot more repay replay value and I don't see why that's a bad thing. So yeah, honestly, I think they just need to mix those two systems together and also put a bit more focus on classes. Race-wise, I think, honestly, they've pretty much got it nailed because at the end of the day, 
some people would say like, oh, maybe add more races, but you know, the Tamriel world is the world of Tamriel. The races are the races there, so I don't really think they could just add another race in. It wouldn't really work with the lore. But honestly, I don't think that's a problem. There's already a bunch of races in there anyway, and I think it does just fine as it is. Although, having said that, I don't see why maybe one day down the line you could um, do something similar, linking back to factions. It'd be pretty cool if you could maybe, like, join the Force One or something like that, or become a bandit, or become a raider. So, sort of faction-wise, class-wise, I think there's a lot they can go there. Um, you know, you might want to be, like, an assassin and you can be an assassin and you can do Dark Brotherhood stuff or might maybe you just want to be you know a bandit or a highwayman I think that'd be great I think there's a lot more that they can do in the way of factions and classes okay coming on to magic honestly I don't have a ton to say I've never really been a huge magic person anyway and honestly I think the magic system has worked great I think if we do it as I said before with perks do it similar to oblivion where they level up individually but I honestly just think there could be more variety there were a lot of spells in both oblivion and Skyrim However, I downloaded a mod, a mod, and I think it was called the um, it was called like the Apocalypse Pack or something, and it, it added like a hundred plus spells to the game, and loads of them. It wasn't like gimmicky stuff; it just made sense. So I think they could definitely add a lot more spells into the game, just to give it a lot more variety for the the majors, you know, the people who are playing as as magic classes. And I think they could have a slightly different ways, like slightly more schools of magic. I think having mysticism, alteration, destruction and all that sort of stuff works fine. But maybe if they had some sort of subclass type system, so you could focus on fire, you could focus on lightning, you could focus on cold, similar to Diablo 2, um, where you could be a sorceress and if you wanted to focus on the lightning, which is what I chose, you could just focus on the lightning type skills. And I think this would work well because if they are, if they do end up adding like a lot more magic skill, magic spells and stuff, I think having subclasses of school would actually help a lot as well. Okay, coming on to the location, I think it's pretty. It, this could go either way. I wouldn't particularly be upset if they went back to an old place. I don't want them to do Skyrim again. And I think Cyrodiil again wouldn't be the worst thing to see it on current gen standards, but at the same time, I don't necessarily want to see that either. Um, but basically, so far we've had Skyrim, Cyrodiil, Morrowind, and High Rock have been done. So that leaves Vela Mord elsewhere, Black Marsh, and the Somerset Isles. In my opinion, I think the Somerset Isles could be awesome, um, because it's a very, very different to Skyrim. Skyrim is very cold and grey and stuff, but the Somerset Isles is very bright, so it'd be interesting to see that done and to see that contrast. Um, However, I'd also like to see Elsewhere and Valen Mud, just because they aren't places we've seen before. However, else, the thing about Elsewhere and Valen Mud, each one is about half the size of Skyrim, and Skyrim is already smaller than Cyrodiil, so I think if it was, say, just Valen Mud, it'd maybe be a bit too small. Honestly, though, if this is a big project and they are planning on working on it for a long time, I don't see why they can't just have the whole of Tamriel. They did it in Arena, and that was, like, way back in the day, so I think it could be interesting to just do it again, and at the end of the day, most of the map is available in the Elder Scrolls Online, so I think if the Elder Scrolls Online was just a side game, then I don't see why they wouldn't want to put the extra effort in to make, you know, a full map in the main game. So yeah, honestly, anywhere new I think would be awesome. Um, I'm looking forward to just exploring anywhere in Tamriel, to be honest, uh, but if they did the whole map, which I don't see why they could not, you know, if they've got the whole of Bethesda working on it, and it's a main game series, I think that'd be really awesome. Maybe a bit ambitious though, we'll see. Okay, lastly I want to talk about weapons and armour. So honestly, I think the Fallout 4 system was awesome. With the whole thing of like, you could fight tougher enemies and get legendary drops, and they can be like, pseudo randomised and that there's some slightly different stats and stuff you can get on them. I thought that system was great and I'd love to see that back in the Elder Scrolls 6. And next, I just want to say that there was quite a lot of different types of armour and stuff. You know, you got like the dragon bone armour and the glass armour and the iron armour. But I just think there could be more variety because once you've sort of leveled, once, if you're doing a replay save, if you're doing another character, once you've leveled it up to a certain point, you're going to be wearing the same armour each time really. So I think it'd be nice to have sort of different types of armour on the same level so that, you know, if you're at a certain level in your character, you have a choice of what armour you want to wear as well. Very similar to Fallout 4, I think Fallout 4 did a great job in the variety of armour. I do still quite like the sort of, the layers to it, so you go like iron and then, you know, steel and then you can maybe move up to dwarven. And I think having the sort of, like, tiered layers to it does work really well, but I just would like more variety on each individual tier. And it's the same thing with weapons too, because they sort of get bundled together. But um, that's pretty much going to do it for this video. I, those are the main things I wanted to talk about. I am going to talk about things maybe in a bit more in depth in the future, as I said at the start of the video and I do have a couple of other things which I didn't talk in this video just because I didn't want it to go on too long such as dialogue and companions and um, 
you know, owning houses and stuff like that, and also mod support. All this sort of stuff is what stuff I want to talk about in the future. But for now, that's going to do for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, be sure to leave a like. It would be really helpful and really useful. Other than that, be sure to leave a comment and let me know what you want in the Elder Scrolls 6. My name is Bignetti. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Peace, peace. Thank you.